Hello and welcome back to another episode of Foxy No Tales Minecraft Adventures here in my ideas world and I've got an idea and my idea is a drowned and zombie farm. Now these have probably been overly done already now that we're in the aquatic update and it is very very basic. It's basically exactly the same as a zombie spawner but instead of having a water elevator we're now using the soul sand to lift the zombies up the elevator and we've got a system at the bottom that allows us to split between drowns and zombies and deal with them appropriately. So I'm not going to go into a great deal of how we actually build this thing but I'm going to show you a few of the things that make this unique and useful. The first thing if we go inside here is that with the new water mechanics when we use soul sand it's very difficult to actually get the mobs inside the chute without something in the way. So using this standard design here mobs fall in the water they go to the back they get pushed into the center but now whoa hang on let me go back down there it kind of happened already now I've had to add this slime block on a piston which is on a clock to push the mobs inside there because the mobs would literally get stuck on this block here they would get stuck where the signs are if you take the signs away the water flows from there that way and everything gets stuck so now if you watch this you'll see the zombies get pinged inside there and they instantly go up the tube you do occasionally get a stuck zombie but they will move through and they go up the water tube much much faster let's see if we can watch that happen again here we have a zombie, he's coming down, he's going to drop down into the water channel there, he's going to get hit by the slime block and he's going to go straight up the soul sand elevator. All we've done here is we've dropped this middle section here down by one block and we've put a slime block on a piston there and I'll show you how that works. There's literally a sticky piston which is attached to the slime block with some obsidian around it like that and just a clock like this which keeps that firing. If I turn that off and the pistons retracted you'll be able to see that the, the zombies get stuck on there they don't go anywhere the water flow doesn't push past there because the signs there you have to physically either push them or they'll push each other and can you see that one's got stuck there even though he's in the elevator his head's on the sign so this slime block will push him through far enough that that's not going to happen I've also just for good measure added a bit of blue ice there as well just to really help them slide through there so you can see now without that on we've got quite a gathering so if you're zombie spawner is built like this and you're thinking oh no all my zombies are getting stuck it's very very simple to sort out all you've got to do is drop those three middle bits one block lower down and put a slime block on a piston and have it on a clock so it pushes them through we'll turn that back on we'll whip back around there as quick as we can and hopefully hopefully they'll all start getting pushed through there you go these two look like they're getting stuck in the middle. They will eventually get sorted out. They will go through. There we go. Look, they're jumping past each other and up they go. Now, if we watch on the outside, hopefully we'll see a zombie go up this water system. You'll see how quickly they actually fly up the water elevator now that we're using soul sand instead of a water elevator. And the reason we have to do this is because undead mobs now sink in water. They'll no longer go up a water elevator on their own accord because they sink in water. And look how fast these guys go up this. It's a much much faster and they come down and they land here just as they would do in a normal system but now I've got a minecart that picks them up so this minecart has got two lots of tracks and a lever here if I flick the lever up the minecart will go around that way and there's a little activator rail there that will drop the zombies off into that side and if I flick the, the lever down the minecart will go that way and there's an activator there which will drop the zombies in that side. You'll see that that side is full of water and this side isn't. So this side is just regular zombies and this side is drowned. Now the drowns you can see they hold tridents and nautilus shells and things like that so we're getting new drops from those and the zombies are just standard ones. This system doesn't have an automatic system of sorting out zombie villagers like the one in my survival world. This one we're only going to be dealing with zombies and drowns, not curing villagers. So the other thing that this has got then is it's got two more levers, which I don't know why there's one there, two more levers for crushers. So in case you don't want to use this as an XP farm, basically you can use this as an XP farm if you want to. You can stand here and kill them and collect the XP. Or if you don't, if you're not bothered about the XP, you can just flick the lever down and that will kill them all by crushing them and all their items will drop into the chest. Because we've got all the glass around here like this, the zombies still can't escape even when there's a crush is closed so that's okay and I've just realized that I need to replace that there with that so we can actually get the XP out of here and I need to do the same thing on this side but I don't want them to escape when I do that I knew that was gonna happen <laughs> look at all these guys that's absolutely crazy right let me just get rid of these guys quickly boom 
Right, and let's, uh, let's put a trap door there so they can't get out. Okay, let's uh, turn this back on then so they're going to start coming back around this way and let's put the minecart back on. The thing is about drown mobs though, and I don't know if it's a bug, as soon as they turn from a zombie to a drown mob, they suddenly get full health back. You can see these zombies are one hit kill because they've dropped down there and they've dropped again in here, so they're literally one hit kills with a punch. And they, These are until they turn into drowns, and you'll see in a minute when this guy turns into a drowned, we won't be able to kill him with, what, with our fists very easily. We'll have to use a sword. There we go. So we've got a drown there now. If we hit the drowned, you'll see, although there are zombies in the way, we can't, we can't one punch him, we can't two punch him. He takes a lot of punches to actually kill. That's because now that he's turned from a zombie into a drowned, he's got full health. It basically gives them full health back, which means you either need to use a sword to kill them, or again, we can use a crusher, which basically pushes the blocks out. That'll kill them, and then once they're dead, their items will drop into that block and you can put the crusher away. But look how long it's taken to kill them with the crusher. If I flick this back onto zombies and get some zombies on the other side, you'll see how quickly they go. Or we can just do it on that guy. You see there's a zombie in there, put the crusher across, he dies instantly just because they're one, one hit kills. There we go, we've got a zombie coming in here. If I push them across and put that over there, you'll see the crusher kills them with instantly. So I guess it's a bug that once they've turned from a zombie to a drown, they get full health back. I don't think that'll stay in the game forever, but certainly they do for now. But this is a good system. It works really well. It's very simple. All you've got to do is flick that lever if you want drowns or if you want zombies. And we've got crushes there as well if you're not bothered about standing there all day long whacking them, which is fantastic, which makes it a very, very easy way to get tridents and nautilus shells and rotten flesh. But it won't do zombie villages. It's not going to sort out zombie villages. They're just going to end up dying like the rest of them. So I'm going to leave this running with the drown side on for a little while and see how quickly we can get some tridents in this thing. While we're waiting, I think I'll just give you a quick look at how the minecart track works. They land on a lower slab and the minecart rail comes up underneath that slab all the way round and it creates a full loop. At this point here, we've got a lever on the track in order to switch directions and round the back here, we've got a detector rail on this side, which basically makes the minecart track go back the right way. Without that detector rail there, the minecart will actually go the wrong way around the system and it won't work. So you need to have a detector rail there. We've got plenty of powered rails around there just to make sure that the minecart doesn't stop and the activator rails are on redstone blocks as well because the activator rails have to be powered in order for them to work. An activator rail will take any mob or item out of a minecart as it goes over them as long as it's powered. If it's not powered, it won't do anything. So that's how it works. In order for the crusher not to get rid of the water on here, if you look inside here, the actual water source blocks are on this side. The reason I put trap doors inside the water source blocks is to stop baby zombies being able to get in there. You can see now that we've got an absolute ton of drowns in here. You can see some are already holding nautilus shells. I can't see any holding tridents. Now I can either stand here with my sword and I can get them this way, which might take quite a while, but I will get some good XP from that. Or I can just flick on the crusher, watch them all die, and then once they're dead, I can, uh, yeah, I can collect everything from there. And you'll also see that as they're dying in the crusher, the zombies can still get inside, they're still getting dropped off, they're still getting put inside there, and they will wait until we flick open that again and they can drop back inside. Now hopefully we'll be able to see what we got from that little batch of drowns in there. A few Nautilus shells, that's about it. Not very much at all. No tridents yet. It's going to be interesting to see if looting 3 gives us more of a chance of getting tridents from the drowns than uh, it does just regularly killing them or with a regular sword. So I'm going to try that next once these guys have all started to turn. I'm also going to enchant it with Smite 5 because they are undead mobs so that should help me kill them with one chop. Which, nah, not quite, two sometimes. Right, we've got a few drowns again, so let's start whacking away with our sword. We do have a few zombies in there as well. Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do that about that other than wait for them to turn. So I'm just going to keep chopping away at these uh, these drowns and see what we get. So there we go. After about killing five or ten drowns with our looting three and smite five sword, we did get one trident, and it's got pretty good durability on that, actually. We also got a bunch more Nautilus shells. So this works pretty well. It's a pretty good system. So that's it. That's pretty much the system. I'm sure there are better ways of doing this uh, are out at the moment but you know it's early days for the aquatic update part two this is my first go at it and i'm sure i'll come up with some new designs in the future i hope you enjoyed this video if you did do please leave a like and if you haven't already please subscribe and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye